Today I'm gonna to show you what object-oriented programming is. And you may be in a class right now, like a Java class, or doing an online course, but they may be using a bunch of fancy terms like polymorphism, inheritance, and things like that. But for me, all that did was just confuse me more. So I'm gonna to try to show you what object-oriented programming is in a very simple, succinct way. It's gonna be my goal in this video. So if you're new here, my name is Alex. I make Java tutorials on this channel every single week, just like this one. So if you're new here and you might be interested in that, then consider subscribing. But we're in Eclipse. Let's learn some object-oriented programming while we're at it. So we're all on the same page. We'll just start a new Java project together by going to File, New, Java Project. I'll just call it like something like object-oriented programming e is fun, like that. Hit Finish. And inside that Java project, right-click on Source and go to New Class. This is a Java file. So we'll just call it something like pen. We'll call it pen. And then hit this public static void main checkbox and then hit finish. So this generates some code for us and we can write code inside of these curly braces. Like um, say a print statement like this. Let's say we'll print hello. If we save it and run it, then in the console window down here, we get hello. Because whenever we click this green run button, that runs code inside of the main method. So anything inside of the curly braces will get run when we click the green run button. And that's why it prints hello. This print statement, for example, is just code. Any programming language has code like this, like one line will do this. This one line will print hello. Or we can say this one line sets a variable a equal to zero. Or even um, this line will say if a is equal to zero, then it will run code inside of here. And this is all just code. It's programming. It's a line by line set of instructions that gets run. So you could do this in Python or Java or Kotlin or Swift or C. So we know what programming is, but what is object oriented programming? Imagine we get rid of this main method here. So all the programming inside is gone and we tried to run this. We get red text, um, it says error, main method not found in class pen. Whenever we click the green run button, anything inside of the main method gets run. And since there's no main method, nothing runs and we get an error. So right now I want you to forget everything you know about a main method or programming. Don't try to memorize any of what I'm gonna say. Just kind of follow along on your phone or on your computer. I've got a pen here. It's a blue blue pen. Um, it's a Pilot G2. And it's uh, 10, 10 point, I think that's 0.1 millimeters. It can click and it's a gel pen. I think it would be pretty cool if we could turn this real life object that is blue, that clicks, that I can physically write with. What if we could represent this inside of a computer? I think that would be a pretty cool thing to do. So I'm just gonna show you how we would do that. We already named it pen, and we'll just start describing it. Like, what is it? Well, it's a pen, it's a gel pen. So we can say like, um, type is gel, like that. We can say the color, the color is blue. Blue. It's um, it's a 10, that's the, the point of the font. So we can say point is 10. And that's it, just a few things to describe the pen. It's a gel pen, it's blue, and it has 10 point. Well, now we've sort of described this pen inside the computer, this real physical pen inside the computer. Let's think about some actions we can do with this pen. Well, it looks like we can we can click it. Um, we can take it apart, like we can untwist it and maybe replace the, the ink tube inside of it. So let's try to describe those three actions in here. Well, we can write a method for each of these. So one thing we can do is just write some keywords for starting off a method. We can say click, so we can click the pen and maybe create some Boolean variable to say if it's clicked or not up here. So we can say clicked equals false. But when we click it, we'll set clicked equal to true. 
add the keyword static up here. We can unclick the pen, say unclick, and then set clicked back to false. And that'll be fine for now. So we've created our physical blue 10 point font clickable pen inside of Java. Now we can actually use the pen we've created. So to do that, we'll just make a new class on the source folder. So go to file new class and we'll call this like um, main, like our um, main method class where we call our pen code. So to use the pen from the computer, we just type pen, which is the name of our class right here. So we do pen, we'll name it like p equals new pen. Since this is in the same folder as pen, we don't have to import it. If it was outside the folder, we'd have to hover over it and click an import to make it work. Now, when we type P and then put a dot, the dot brings up everything that this pen can do. So it actually shows us that we have a color, a point, and a type for it that describe the pen. We also have some methods down here with the green circles, equals, get class, and hash code. These are all built in, so any class that you make will have these default methods. But if we scroll down a little bit, we can see click and unclicked. Actually, that should be unclick, not unclicked. Just like that. So when we do p dot again, we can see click and unclick. So we can just print out some of the attributes. So say we'll print out the color, put that in a print statement color, say we'll print, let's print the point and also the type. So these are our three attributes of the pen. Now let's see whether the pen is clicked or not. Let's print out p.clicked. This is the variable, see if clicked is true or false. We'll run it and since it's just how it was, it's not clicked, so clicked is false. But if we run p.click to click our virtual pen, and then we print out clicked again, then we'll see that it's now true since we clicked it, it's clicked. All object-oriented programming is, is taking real physical objects or making up objects that will help you and putting them into the computer just like this. An object has attributes and actions. It's a gel pen that's blue and 0.10 font and you can click and unclick it. Object-oriented programming is making objects like this and then using them throughout your code to create a result you want. If you want to use artificial intelligence, you go out and see that people wrote artificial intelligence objects. You make that object, call it like AI. You use that object on the game or with the parameters you want for your specific purpose. You can create as many objects as you want and you can even say that objects are related to each other so you don't have to reuse code. So say I have this pen class, but I have three different pens here. All of them are pens, all of them, well these two can be clicked, click, click, but this one you have to twist. So you can modify objects based on how specific you want. Or you can make like a generic pen, say like it's got ink in it and it can be opened. And then you can create different pen objects that inherit or take attributes and methods from the generic one and then specify it further. There are lots of different terms with object-oriented programming, but I want you to get the base because it's really gonna help you a lot in the future if you know the very core of it. Like me, I didn't understand the core of it at all. So I was trying to memorize all these different terms that I didn't know how they related, and I couldn't keep up with all these different terms. So let's do one more example. Let's say I have a pair of headphones right here. A pair of headphones. They are over-ear headphones, they're Bluetooth, and they're red and black. We're gonna do just what we did before, but we're gonna turn this physical pair of headphones into an object in Java. So we'll go to new class, call it headphones, and hit finish. And the reason we want to turn this physical object 
into code in our computer is so that we can know information about how these work and what they are without having to physically be here and like look at it, like on Amazon. There's a bunch of information you could know about this if you're looking to buy something. There's a bunch of buttons here. If you're gonna buy something, you might wanna know what functionality this has on the headphones. It's got volume up, side uh, skip buttons. You can take calls with it. It's Bluetooth, it's micro USB. If you didn't know any of that, then you might not know if this is the right fit for you. So we represent this as an object in the computer so that we can understand what it is without physically having it. I hope I explained that well. If I didn't, please leave a comment and maybe we can all come to a conclusion. So we'll, we'll give this a few attributes here, like say the charge is a micro USB. Maybe it has an array of controls on the side and say we can uh, do power, it's got volume, skip, it's got play pause. And last we can say color, is red black. Now what actions can we perform on this? Well, we can like turn it on, power on, and to keep track of whether it's on or off again, we can just do what we did last time, keep a Boolean variable. We'll set it to off and call it power. If we power it on, then power will be true. We can power it off. Power equals false. And say maybe we can volume up, volume down. We'll set the start volume to say zero. And we'll do volume up. Each time the volume up button is pressed, then we'll take the volume and increment it by one. And the same for volume down except each time we hit the down button, we'll take it down one. And we could set like max volume, min volume, things like that. But for simplicity's sake, this is what we'll have. And this is how these headphones are actually programmed. Each time a button is pushed, the microchip inside of it gets the signal from one button push and then calls the volume up method or whatever turns the volume up inside of here. It keeps track of these different states, like a state is a button push, the on state or the off state. We know that if it's off, then we can't, like the buttons don't work except for the power button. So representing physical objects makes it super awesome to program and very easy to keep track of because you know what it is, you can create a mental image of it, and it's got attributes and functions associated with it. So that's really the basis. You can use the headphone class. Actually, for extra credit, you could um, go inside of this main method and call the methods and print out the attributes of the headphone class we just made. Class and object are pretty much the same thing. But I hope this was helpful, and let me know if I explained this well. I tried my best. Or if you have some more insight and you'll like to share, then please post that in the comments. If you have more questions, I have a Discord and a channel for coding questions. So if you'd like to pull some knowledge from this coding community, you can do that there. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day.